Okay, so this is chapter uh, 13, and we are going to talk about logistic regression. Uh, this is the first um, of this kind in the book. Uh, so quite interesting, because now we deal with um, binary categorical variables, and uh, we want to learn uh, a classification modeling approach, and then finally evaluate the classification quality. Right? Can you hear me and see the the screen? Fine. Is that right? Yeah. Okay. So as the other said, um, we'll dig into classification techniques the Bayesian logistic regression and the naive Bayesian classification. I think I think this, this one will be in the next chapter. Okay, so we load the usual libraries here and what we deal with this within this um, chapter is uh, the weather in Perth in Australia. And, uh, uh, but this time, so we like to predict rain, so rain tomorrow, uh, based on uh, um, humidity at 9 a.m. Uh, and then uh, basically we base our analysis uh, just on this one predictor. Then at the very end of the chapter, they um, expand to uh, these other two predictors. So just for now, we focus on predicting rain tomorrow based on humidity and 9 a.m. Okay, so uh, the, the data set, uh, I don't know if, uh, how you, you find more comfortable it's uh, here or in R, but basically just the same. So um, uh, we have the day of the year, uh, rain tomorrow is a factor um, variable with no if it doesn't rain or yes and otherwise then humidity at 9 a.m with some uh, degree of humidity okay and then we have the same other things and we we also have uh, uh, this rain today so we can expand our analysis say uh, will be raining tomorrow given that uh, we had uh, rain today. So basically, uh, this uh, the, the logistic model, uh, we know that is based on a binary uh, classification. So, uh, and so to predict the rain tomorrow, so we um, assess the response variable to be binary, uh, more specifically one if rain tomorrow or zero other, otherwise. Uh, the, the chapter goes back a bit um, uh, on the definition of odds uh, and the difference with probability, so which I found very uh, useful uh, and uh, interesting, so I really need it. Uh, so I uh, got the occasion to, uh, to go back uh, uh, and refresh these um, definitions. So the odds is the um, relationship between the probability that the event happens and the probability that the event doesn't happen. Okay, so the uh, you, you, we have this uh, uh, P, which is the probability of our, some events to happen. And we know that the probability has a range between zero and one, while the odds, which is uh, uh, the, the relationship between the, the event uh, happen or the event doesn't happen. So would be the, um, the ratio of the P uh, and one minus P. This uh, range uh, ranges uh, from zero to infinite. Okay, so this is a very important um, uh, you know, step because uh, this is uh, when we deal with uh, information, so we can identify what we are talking about, even uh, uh, thinking about the ranges. Okay, so obviously, from the odds, 
we can retrieve the probability, uh, which uh, would be the odds divided by one plus the odds. So just a reverse of this uh, 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 formulation. Uh, what's happened now is that to predict rain tomorrow in our, in our data sets, in our observations, we ask what, uh, what would be an, the appropriate, appropriate model structure for this data. Okay, and th this was one of the uh, many quizzes that the, the, this book provides. Okay, so we can uh, use a Bernoulli or a binomial with uh, one TO, a gamma or a beta. Okay, obviously, so we have uh, one uh, and zero, a binary um, outcome. And so we are tend to obviously uh, choose for, for a Bernoulli, okay, or a binomial with one trio. And uh, in fact, it says what values can Y, our response value, take, and what we, we, you should ask yourself, you know, what probability models assume this um, same set of values? And so the, the, the response is Bernoulli, okay? So the Bernoulli probability model is the best candidate for this type of data uh, and the type of response that we um, use. Because uh, the response is a discrete variable, which can only take values uh, zero or one. Yeah, it's a binary. And so the, the first, uh, the first uh, uh, interesting thing is uh, that we uh, are usual set uh, uh, our first um, sketch of the model, okay? So it's uh, our response variable depends on the probability that this uh, would happen, and it's approximated um, um, to a Bernoulli of, of, with a, a P as a parameter. And this, uh, the expected value uh, is this probability. So. Um, okay, now now is uh, we are going to to go a bit uh, on on the more so on the on the best part of the logistic um, regression. Uh, so it's a logistic um, uh, modeling. So the logistic regression model, okay, specify how the expected value of rain depends upon the predictor. So let's imagine that we use just the humidity at 9 a.m., okay? So this is going to be our first scratch. So we have a, a function of the probability that it will rain or not rain, uh, okay? Uh, and this uh, is um, the, the result of this, uh, the, our model equation, okay? So the expected, uh, uh, the estimated values, uh, um, uh, of, uh, would be this one here. And so P depends upon the predictor value. That, that's, that's okay. So, but now what's happened is that um, the logistic regression model, as we have two binary, uh, we have one, so the response can be one or zero. Um, it's suggested to use a transformation Okay, the, of the probability. So this G here is the function. Uh, we can use different functions, but um, means that you can use a function of, of, of the probability, okay? So that now this function is the log. So we are going to use the log. And the, the reason for this is because we've got binary values. And uh, the only way to, um, uh, have a range, continuous range of these two values is to use uh, using a logistic function. A logistic function is a logarithmic function, okay? So we apply the logarithm uh, to, the, um, to the odds of the probability. So the relationship between that the the event would happen and uh, the event would not happen. And so this is the log odds, okay? 
once we got this one here, we can uh, go back and retrieve the, the values, apply the exponentiation, with, with, which is the, exactly the, the opposite of the logarithm. So the log of something uh, releases um, a value that would be the exponentiation of this value. Okay. So um, this odds, okay, this bit that we got inside the logarithm uh, is the value of the exponentiation. Okay. Um, and then we can finally retrieve the um, probability uh, with this uh, the exponentiation of our mother function, which is a function of the probability, uh, divided by one plus the same the same uh, value, and this is exactly what uh, uh, we said here. So that the odds is the probability divided by one minus the probability. So the fact that something happened and something that won't happen. Uh, and uh, the uh, probability will be the odds divided by one plus the odds. So exactly the reverse. Uh, and so you, if you, um, in general, who also, so those ones that will look at this video, if you are not, uh, so you need to spend some time uh, like meditating on, on those things, but then they became more clear if you spend some time thinking about them. Uh, but it, 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 it's uh, very straightforward, but it can easily uh, uh, lead you into confusion. Uh, so um, let's go forward and put some uh, extra light in, on, the, on those things. So beta zero, so this is our model, okay? Uh, this is our model and uh, our beta zero, which is the intercept, uh, it how how do we uh, obtain the beta zero? This is this is for uh, linear regression uh, for logistic regression. So we put zero all the predictors. You know? Okay, if if x is zero, uh, so we left with with beta zero. So we easily find if we have this. Uh, um, uh, uh, so we easily find uh, this value that will be exactly the same as our expected uh, estimate, our estimation. Instead, beta one, in this case of the logistic regression, is the log of the odds of x1 minus the log of the odds of x. This is a, a tricky transformation, which is by definition, a property of the logarithm, okay? So, uh, a logarithm, a logarithm of uh, p divided by one minus p is the same as say the logarithm of uh, um, uh, so the 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 odds minus the logarithm of the the other the other bit. So basically, if we uh, consider uh, this as um, so, if we set um, x. Okay, to be equal to small x, the, the next value, okay, so this is x i one, okay, let's, uh, if this is x i one, that, this would be that i is varying within some, some range of values, okay? So let's imagine that this is x one one, it will be equal to this small x. Then the very next value, so x two one, will be equal to a small x plus one. Okay. So this um, uh, this formulation here is just the progression of this um, uh, vector. Okay. That is obtained calculating the log of the odds of this, uh, um, uh, the estimation of this value um, within uh, the vector. So the, the, the in sequence all the values, the um, x11, x21, x31, and so on. Okay, 
So then we can, um, having uh, said that, we, we will see this uh, um, with, with the formulation. Having said that, we then can retrieve uh, applying the exponentiation on both sides. So we exponentiate beta one and exponentiate the logs, the log, and, and so we left uh, with the odds divided by one plus the odds, which is the uh, probability. Okay, so we can retrieve the probability exponentiating um, our uh, coefficient, the result of um, our coefficient, which is released by the model when we look at the summary. Okay, uh, so going forward, uh, if we have more, more predictors, so this is what is going to happen. So basically, we, we're going to have x1 uh, and so on to x2. But this we 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 see this at the very bottom of the of the chapter. So I'm I'm not sure I'm, we are going to make it today. But anyway, uh, so um, as we did it, this is the the data set. And uh, if we uh, count uh, rain tomorrow, so we see how many no and how many yes we have. And then, uh, and so we see that there is a quite unbalanced uh, proportion between yes and no. Uh, we see that the, the possibility, so the, the proportion that uh, we have uh, yes as a um, uh, rain tomorrow, it's about uh, 20%. So this is mentioned in the book. So let's, let's stick on that. We can even do uh, a pie chart uh, with the same data. Okay, so um, uh, we see that the, the, the uh, uh, on our observed data, a very about about twenty percent. Okay, is the uh, on average on an average day there is roughly twenty percent chance of rain. Okay, and um, so we start in setting assumptions for our model because we know that we need to pass through this formulation, but we apply the formula in R, uh, but uh, we need to set the priors, uh, we need to set the parameters of the priors. So we start, we start um, identifying this, this, passing through some assumptions. So the first assumption is the P, so our probability that rains tomorrow is 20%. So there is a roughly 20% chance of rain. And then this chance will increase, this is another, the second assumption, when preceded by a day with high humidity or rain. Okay, so if we, based on our only predictor, that uh, humidity at 9 a.m., uh, if this is very high, so that means that we had a rainy day on, on, the, on the previous day. So the chance that today, uh, sorry, that so if today uh, rains, tomorrow it will be, there, there, will, there will be the, the chance of rain increases, okay? So this is, these are our assumptions. So then we can even uh, uh, with some, uh, uh, you know, this is day of the year uh, on the x-axis and the humidity and I am. Um, uh, this is humidity at 3 p.m. Okay. So what is the chance that rains or not rains, to, uh, will rain or not rain tomorrow? Okay. So yes is that um, uh, so it would be um, this uh, teal blue is the humidity at 9 a.m. So as a quite uh, normal distribution, okay? So we can see that, it's, so it's I think, sort of campanular if we look at the time series, okay? So we can even have a look at the density but we might want to spend uh, some time on this thing somewhere else. And this finally, so we go back to the model. So this is our model. So we have a model 
beta 0, beta 1, independent. We suppose that they are independent. Bernoulli, uh, Bernoulli uh, with parameter p. And then we have our uh, log odds. This is uh, our logistic regression. So we use the log odds, which is equal to our model function. OK. So what we said, based on our assumption that we reign with 20% chance, the log odds is about minus 1.4. Why is that? What is this minus 1.4? So if I do the log of my P, which is uh, 0 0.2 divided by 1 minus 0 0.2, I found something which is very close to one point minus 1.4. So approximately, sorry, I can if I round this number, it will be 1.4. So uh, my, my uh, this is the odds of the probability. So the log odds of, the, um, of this 20% chance, it's minus 1.4. So we, we said the first thing this bit here. So we know that this is uh, our starting point to set the prior. Uh, we know that this is 20 or 0.2, and this is minus 1.4, okay? So now we, we, need, and we use this to specify the priors. Beta zero is centered, okay? Beta zero is our intercept. Okay, it, it, it is when the predictor, so like in this case, humidity at 9 a.m. is zero, null. So the, this is a centered value. So, uh, and it is this one, val this one, this value here. Okay, our starting point. So when this is zero, we left with beta zero, which is equal to this value here. And this value here is minus 1.4, okay? So this, uh, we are talking about uh, logarithm, right? So the log, going back to a bit of mathematics, log one of one is zero. And the expected, is, um, the exponent, uh, so, and the exponentiation of the log of one is one. Okay, the log of one is zero. This the exponential of the log of one is one. And so uh, with this uh, interchange of things, we can uh, estimate the fact that it will rain tomorrow. Okay, and uh, it is yes or not. Okay, so. For sure, uh, we have uh, uh, zero as the uh, upper um, value of the range because that will cons uh, would means that this is one. Okay, so the log of one, which is uh, my probability, is from one to zero. Uh, from zero to one, okay? So one is my upper value of my range of probability. So that will, it will uh, rain 100% sure. So it is one. And I put inside the log, okay? And this is zero. So I assume that my range as an upper value, the upper value of my range is zero. Then I need to find the other one. Okay, so um, this is the confident intervals. So my centered value is minus one point four, and then I need to find uh, the range. Okay, so this is plus. So the this would be plus and minus two times. Uh, a standard deviation, okay? But now I don't have the standard deviation, so I need to retrieve it to find the standard deviation. If I set my upper limit to zero, 
I can retrieve this x, this value. And so I apply this formulation. So I retrieve x with an equation and find this 0.7. Okay, so this will be the value that I'm going to put here. And I have this too. Maybe you, you can see clearly here. Uh, okay, yeah, so plus and minus. So we have our centered value minus 1.4 plus and minus two times, two times our uh, X that we found. Okay, so we found this way so we, with a starting point. So we say that our upper uh, value, the highest value of our range is zero. Because if I, uh, this is zero, so I put one here, the log of one is zero. So this is, okay. So I go forward and say now, okay. So if I apply the same reasoning with uh, minus 1.4, minus two, and then I have no point seven, which I've just found. So I can find the other side of the range, which is minus 2.8. Okay, so this is my range. So it rains with, uh, within this range tomorrow, the value that can be assumed, it's minus 2.8 to zero, okay? So this is, uh, this way I can set my trial for beta zero centered, okay? And this will be a normal distribution with a mean minus 1.4 and a sigma of 0.7. Okay, so the odds of rain on an average uh, day could be somewhere between, okay, no point, no six and one. And how is that? So basically I put this zero, inside this exponent, um, exponent six. So I exponentiate zero, which is one. And I exponentiate minus 2.8, which is no point no six or no point no seven, uh, no, no point no six. Okay, so um, and, and this is to retrieve the uh, this is a, a, a probability. This is the probability that will rain tomorrow. The range of the probability that will rain is not exactly zero. It doesn't start from zero, it starts from 0 0.06. Okay, so it's likely more than zero. So the probability that will rain uh, tomorrow ranges from 0 0.06 to one. Now, what's happen if I want to, the probability of rain on the average day could be somewhere between these two, okay? And um, this is because if I do uh, uh, zero, zero, no point no six divided by one plus, uh, so I, I find this, uh, probability. Okay, which is exactly the same. And this is the uh, more or less the same. And this is the other one. Why is. Okay. Then uh, we go on beta one. Uh, beta one is the coefficients of the 
is the coefficient of our uh, predictor. Okay, so the coefficients of our predictor in uh, beta one. Okay. Is this one here? Uh, so as well as a normal distribution, okay. Uh, and, and here again, we have uh, an, an expected value and the sigma. How do we establish this value for the humidity uh, at 9 a.m.? Okay, so with beta one, we want to identify the chance of rain that the, the rain that rain increases when preceded by a day high humidity. So our range in this case has a lower limit of zero. Okay, and we estimate the upper limit to be no 0.14. And so we already estimate a range. So in this case, we are not we we are not searching for the other bit of the range, but we already estimate a range. So and how um how we did it basically. Okay, so this is the um uh, it, it's uh, zero minus the, uh, less than zero cannot be, it's not possible. So it's from zero to some other values. In this case, this value is uh, 0 0.14. Okay. And then I think we are going to see why, because I put it. Um, Afterwards, uh, the the central value for this range. Okay. Ah. Okay. No. No. This is because um I I do a new share, and I show you what the uh, chapter says about this. Okay. So basically, this is the assumption, what, uh, no point 14, it's uh, the assumption for uh, the, the authors uh, set based on some uh, tuning. Okay, and so there is some uh, information when we say that so we um, There you go. Okay. So basically, um, considering uh, the prior, prior tunings um, and um, we set the prior to be minus 1.4. This is what we said. We, we have seen all these things. Now, for beta one, it says that uh, 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 it reflects uh, the vaguer sense that the chance of rain increases when preceded by a day of high humidity. Okay, but we are not sure about that. Specifically, on the log out scale, we assume that the slope ranges somewhere between zero and 0.14. Okay, so going back uh, there, uh, uh, establish this. Okay, if we do the, the mean uh, zero plus uh, uh, 0 0.14 divided by two, we find uh, 0 0.07, okay? And this is the central value, okay? 
And then again, uh, we, uh, we need the sigma, okay, the standard deviation. Now we have no point 14, so the, the, the two uh, 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 limits. So as the same way, we retrieve uh, X, one of the, uh, the sigma, basically, with the, the equation, and we found no point no 35. So this is our uh, prior for beta one, which is a normal of no point no seven, which is this, the mean of the, the central value of the range, and the no point no 35, which is the sigma, and it is this value here. Okay, so we, we plug, we can see this, uh, the two uh, density function with this two value, with the value for both uh, beta uh, centered and beta one, uh, mean and standard deviation that we just found, that we see that uh, the, they are normal. Uh, okay, uh, uh, they, the ranges of the probability density function changes. Okay, so we set the prior. Finally, we simulate 2,000, uh, 20,000 prior crossable pairs of beta zero centered and beta one to describe a prior plausible relationship between probability of rain tomorrow and today's humidity at 9 a.m. Okay, this is what basically changes from a prior to a posterior. This uh, option in the function, prior PD true or prior PD false. If we do prior PD true here, so we model the prior, okay? We run the stand GLM with our prior uh, beta zero centered with our prior beta one with the uh, parameters that we just estimated. And then we set this prior PD true. Okay, so then all that comes after this is, um, uh, you know, a look at the model result. Uh, we can see that uh, it's, um, if we plot, okay, if we plot uh, this value, we see that this is the trend. Um, so the, the, this is the range of the probability that will rain uh, and uh, assume, um, assuming a logistic um, function it, uh, uh, and simulating this 20,000 ta 20, times, we can see that the, it is a logistic uh, function. Uh, and uh, it's basically increasing the chance of uh, rain uh, if the humidity uh, at 9 a.m. is uh, increased. Okay. So again, uh, this is the distribution. And um, here we then, uh, now that we know the prior and we are okay with that, uh, we uh, pass to the posterior, okay? It's clearly, if we have a, a quick look at the humidity and the rain, so we have humidity here and the rain tomorrow there, we see that this is a classification um, problem. So they group within the S and not this way. Uh, and so we calculate and plot uh, the rain rate by humidity, humidity bracket. So here there is a little manipulation. Okay, basically they uh, built up a um, new uh, vector, uh, which is um, um, reassume the, the value of humidity within uh, certain uh, ranges. 
And so we have categories of 10, 20, 20, 30, 30, 40, and so on, uh, each 10 by 10. Uh, and we can see again the mean, so the, the chance that we rain. Um, and so they, they uh, it's again increasing more or less if you can see. Um, so this one, this one. And then it, we then put prior to defaults, we update our prior model that we just done. We prior to defaults, we have our posterior. Now we check the posterior, and this is the all the chains uh, and um, what's happened. And again, we see the intercept and the humidity simulated four times. And then the uh, autocorrelation, uh, which is shows uh, um, steady, so a bit of like changes. And then finally, um, we, we see the posterior. And this is the probability of rain and humidity and nine a.m., which is clearly growing. Yeah. Okay, so what's happened next uh, is that we um, are going to, so basically um, we use this, uh, the, the model, uh, the, the posterior, and then we set uh, a probability, we search for the interval, confidence intervals, and we find these values for the intercept and the humidity and mayhem. And then we exponentiate these confidence intervals to have the, uh, the, the values that we can uh, read through, okay? So which are not logarithmic, but they are um, on a, a base that uh, has the same as our observed values. Uh, finally, um, we can see that um, if we look at the humidity in itself, because now we are going to uh, have evaluation of the model, prediction and evaluation of the model. If we have a look at the humidity, 9 a.m., its range, it goes from 13 to 99. So um, let's set this to 99, so the, the upper value, okay? So we use this, our model, posterior model. We use the posterior predict function to new data setting humidity to 99. Um, and then this is a um, uh, calculation of the odds, log out the odds, the probability. And we can see here uh, that the log odds is the intercept plus the humidity times 99, which is this. Then the odds is, is the exponentiation of the log odds. And the probability is the odds divided by one plus the odds, and so on. Okay, so we see a couple of uh, um, uh, valuations and see that, uh, so this is basically, um, Fifty four percent, the probability, and so how is fair? How fair is this model? How wrong is this model? And how accurate is this model? We have five minutes left, so I don't know what what do you, what would you like to do? Like to uh, stop here, and and this uh, the last two. Uh, for the next uh, week, or because this is just um, 
the confusion matrix that we apply to uh, a model. And then uh, you might be yeah. able to um, go ahead and finish explaining the chapter. I'm, I'm not sure if we have another book club right after this either. Okay. Uh, so I, I'll use these few minutes to, because uh, the, the last, uh, so this is the basically a confirmation that uh, we can uh, like have a look at the cutoff that we uh, assign in the, uh, there is a function named classification summary. And so if you use the cutoff and you change the value of the cutoff, you see that the result of the sensitivity changes from seven to 63, 64, so a, a big jump. And as well as the um, true negative rate drop uh, drops from uh, 98 to 71. And so here we have some uh, metrics, uh, metrics uh, and the, um, so this is, uh, uh, this is the last, the, the very last bit of the chapter. And so we, here we extend the model to more predictors. So the same thing as before, uh, just here, there is no PD, uh, true or false. Uh, this is the new formula with two more predictors. Uh, and so we can see that we have uh, um, some estimations uh, and as well as uh, we can uh, um, use the ELPD for the models, with the limb one out, and so compare the two uh, with different cutoff, okay? So we have a, we use different cutoff. So we uh, set up to leave one out, model one and model two. And so we can compare the two and see that uh, there is a consistent difference. So I think we, um, I'm going to uh, the, 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 the chapter ends uh, more or less here. So the last two paragraphs are um, more or less a confirmation of what we did. It. So uh, the interesting part was the understanding because the log logistic regression and how to use it and how to set the priors and so the parameters inside the, the priors. So I think we I'm going to um uh, and the, the recording and see you next week awesome thank you